Thank you guys for sticking it out here in the basement. Uh, I'm told it's going to be much nicer in the future. Uh, let's keep it going for our next comedian, Brett Pivato, everybody. What's up, sweaty basement? How y'all living? Yeah. Thank you guys for coming out to this thing. This is great. Locally supported, whatever. It's whatever. I don't like it when people tell me that one thing is the new other thing. You know what I'm talking about. Pink is the new black. 40 is the new 20. 50 is the new 30. I never hear 5'6 is the new 5'10. No one says that to me. People are getting taller on average, you know, thanks to nutrition and medicine. 5'6 is a new 5'4. I'm not even as tall as I was. <laughs> I tried at my doctor's office. He wanted to talk to me about my cholesterol. I was like, come on, man, 220 is a new 150. He said, actually, sir, heart disease is a new black death. So deal with that. Touche, medicine man. I like you. So I am old enough that when I was in high school, a pierced ear was all we had to give your finger to the man. That was it. And then right after high school, the gauge showed up. You know, I'm talking about the spacer. It grows in the earlobe over time to some indeterminate size. <laughs> so I don't understand it. I can't relate. Like, how do you, you know, sometimes when I see two dudes with two different size gauges, I wonder if they outrank each other. <laughs> some sort of hidden hierarchy, like the Knights Templar, a secret handshake. How do they do that? Like, how do you make the decision to move up to the next gauge? That's what I don't get. Like, is there, you know, an earlobe consultant that you visit? You know, can you assess the physical limitations of my lobe, sir? How deep into this could I get? I saw a guy one time with a gauge drilled through this part of the ear, which was amazing. It was huge too, like the size of a nickel. So he's actually defeated the purpose of the ear, which is to catch sound. That particular evolutionary innovation has been negated in his world, right? He's turned his back on directional audio information. He was a waiter, he didn't wait on my table, he waited on the table next to mine, so when he came over to take an order, I was just like, and a side of mayonnaise just to see, right? Maybe I get one in through the hoop. The mayonnaise shows up, we're all still friends, right? But I know. I know that ear has been compromised. That's silly. Gentlemen, if you saw a penny sitting on top of a urinal, would you pick it up? No, that's the right answer, good job. Typically, no. What if it was a quarter? No, half dollar? Where are you at, silver dollar? Somebody, typically I can get somebody. There's one right there, for sure. Some people can't be bought. Most audiences these days do make me get up higher and higher in dollar amounts. If I saw a quarter sitting on top of a urinal, I would just assume that someone had next. <laughs> you called it, man. You get in here, it's your world, I'm just living in it. Are there hipsters here tonight? It's Denton, so it's certainly possible. This is kind of a good hipster attraction space. Yeah, I live in the suburbs, deep in the suburbs, far too deep in the suburbs to see hipsters on a regular basis. So, except this one day, I walk into my Starbucks and there's a hipster couple sitting on the couch. It was amazing. The man was perfectly well-dressed, not a hair out of place on his head, and the woman sitting next to him was knitting. <laughs> yeah, that's not a joke. The woman was knitting, she had the needles, the yarn, the whole project going on, it was great. People, if hipsters are knitting at a Starbucks in Flower Mound, that means if you go to a coffee shop in Austin, you can see hipsters churning butter. <laughs> Could happen. Maybe hit up a coffee house in Berlin, you'll find hipsters practicing alchemy. Who knows? <laughs> if you even know what that is. I'm trying to turn those euros back into Deutschmarks. Brexit, you gotta do something. It's Brexit now. It's silly. I see people playing Pokemon Go. It's everywhere. It's taking over. It's getting people out. People are getting off their couch and meeting friends. It's going to save the world. It's amazing. Pokemon Go is here to stay. It's crazy. Like the civic energy. People are doing it. They're getting out. The, the energy needs to be harnessed. We need more from Pokemon, right? They need to be like, 
Put the Amber Alerts in the Pokemon Go. Get the kids on the Pokemon Trail to look for the lost children. We'll wrap it up in two days. It'll be great. Silver Alert, dementia patient on the loose. Pokemon, go get them. Go get them, Pokemon. You do it. It's crazy. I don't like it at all. I see people playing Pokemon Go. Playing Pokemon. Like the caps are fishing. They're out there fishing for the Pokemon, right? There's a, I was up on the square the other day, and apparently a rare Pokemon showed up, and people just started crossing the street against the signal. Just, just going. It just, the Pokemon compelled me. You know, they just... Follow the Pokemon, the real, you know, I don't know, they're naturalists capturing a rare species of Pokemon. All right, I'll tell you one more. I saw an advertisement one time for an atheist film festival. I really didn't understand the festive aspect of atheism. Like, I didn't know they got festive at all. Like, I didn't know that was a thing that could happen. How do they party? Come on down, help us celebrate our rejection of hopeful narratives. gather around this campfire of nihilism and warm ourselves in the glow of our existential ambivalence. We'll extend a festive middle finger to the possibility of your redemption. Sprinkle you with confetti. All right. Thank you, guys. I'm Brett Pivato. Good night, everybody. Keep it going for Brett, everybody.